All right. All right. Welcome to the CXM experience. And today, you know, I got a really fun topic today. I had a great morning. One of the things I get to do uh, in my job as uh, CXO here at Sprinkler is I get to talk to a lot of customers. Um, I've been doing that actually for kind of a long time. I was actually talking to Sprinkler customers when I was a customer. So I was a customer reference for many years. And then I've been doing it since I got here uh, a little over two and a half years ago. And, you know, it's just so, um, that's the right word. It's like energizing and invigorating and sort of mentally stimulating. And it's also so fascinating how so many people have the same problems. And I was talking to someone this morning Great customer of ours, one of the world's great brands. Um, I'm not going to, you know, say who it was or what the brand was, but you know, just just like you'd all know it. And uh, it was a uh, uh, person was based in Amsterdam, it was a European company, and uh, just we're having a good time, just talking about uh, what he's trying to do, what he's trying to accomplish. Um, super innovative thinker, uh, really looking to like kind of break forward, uh, help his company connect to people where they are now. Because I mean, the, the thing I keep t- telling everyone, this sounds kind of obvious, but it's just not obvious inside most companies, is that customers have moved to modern channels. Customers, they're on blogs and forums and they're on review sites and they're reading social posts and they're doing messaging. Like they're not, they're not looking at display sites and they're not reading billboards and they sure don't want you to broadcast at them anymore. They want to have conversations with companies. So he, he gets it, right? He gets it. And he's like, how do I, you know, kind of convince my, my team and, you know, influence other folks and bring people on board. And so we're having a sort of broad based discussion. It made me think the conversation that I have most often with customers is this conversation. And we really don't have a lot of thought leadership material on kind of how to solve this particular problem. So I'm going to start talking about it today. And then, you know, I'm making sort of some notes on what we could do to be more helpful in this area. But the question that people ask, the topic that people are most interested in is, how do I get started? Like, that's it. Like, what's, how do I get started? And the how do I get started is a very, very deep question. Because it's not so much... Um, which social platform do I connect to first? Well, by the way, quick answer, you connect to them all. And that's why you use Sprinkler. But anyways, keep going. And it's not so much maybe even which brand do I do it with first. It really is how do I corral the various silos in my organization and bring them to a common understanding so we can do this as an integrated group? Because as companies have broken themselves into functional empires, uh, it becomes very difficult to have a common view of the customer. It becomes very difficult to collaborate. And it's very difficult for everyone to agree on a single technology, which is why all these companies have all these Frankenstacks. Drives IT crazy. But everyone's just buying their own tech because you know what? It's easier than me having to talk to that person over there or that person over here. I can just focus on what I need to do and get my job done. I'll hit my KPIs and, you know, go home at the end of the day. And it's just at the end of the day, creates a mess. So is a legitimate question today, which is how do I get started? And I I was thinking a lot about it because I think there are three buckets in the how to get started party. Uh, So bucket number one is uh, you need to think through your partnership with IT. You need to think through your partnership with IT. I'm going to come back to that. It's extremely important. Uh, Number two, uh, you need to think through who your bell cows are. All right, we'll talk about bell cows in a moment. But you need to think through who your bell cows are. And number three is you need to think through what causes people to herd in your company. What causes the stampede in your company, right? What's the, what drives the herd instinct? So let's come back to number one. IT. I can't understate the importance of this enough. So the IT teams have been in large part and in many organizations. So this is not, it's not a generalization that can be always true everywhere, but it's true often enough that a lot of people are going to nod their heads when I say this, is that business decision makers have been buying tech 
Um, I read an amazing stat that CMOs are now spending more on tech than CIOs. It's incredible. Uh, and they're end running their IT departments. What I typically hear is, well, IT too, is too slow, or they want to build it all in-house, or they're very conservative or stuck in the past, that kind of stuff. And that might be true, and, and that may be, might be true. But, you know, I guess I've just had some amazing IT partnerships, and I've had some incredible relationships. And I don't know if that's true or if people just are biased that way. Because I know that the IT teams are horrified at the Frankenstacks that are blooming inside all these companies. Uh, even something simple as provisioning a new user requires 60, 70, 80, 90 logins. And, and then when that person leaves the company, they have to be deprovisioned off 60, 70, 80, 90 systems. And they're very rarely cleaned off all the systems, which leaves all sorts of vulnerabilities and holes into the organization where people can continue logging into SaaS applications and accessing company data. Um, it's a real problem. And that's just a simple one. That's one simple example. IT people are smart enough to understand that building these like theoretically API connected systems isn't going to work, that they need to have a more unified system. And I think that's where their head goes on build it in-house because maybe in-house I can build something more unified. They may not be aware of Sprinkler. They may not be aware that there's a unified front office out there, uh, but they do know that just buying all these individual apps is a path to madness. And so I would encourage you to start finding the thought leaders and the innovators in the IT team. It may not be the CIO. It might be someone in a different group, somebody you know, reporting in, somebody at a mid-level, but there's going to be people in IT who get it and recognize it. And I would bring them on board to the decision. Um, work with them as partners. Um, doing that actually helps you get started because it gives you the backing to get rolling across the org. So that's step one. Step two, bell cows. So a bell cow, I think if you don't know what a bell cow is, is that you take a cow who tends to be uh, a leader in the pack and you put a bell around their throat and that clanging bell of the lead cow causes the other cows to follow. So you want to find the bell cows uh, in your organization. Um, sort of one little separate note, uh, don't actually call them bell cows to their face. It's very important. So what does a bell cow look like, right? So uh, what I have noticed is the bell cow is not necessarily the biggest brand. In fact, it's rarely the biggest brand. The biggest brand is usually conservative and there's a lot of anxiety and angst around potential mistakes. They tend to rarely be the bell cow. The bell cow is going to be slightly smaller brand, probably struggling, maybe in a bit of trouble, looking to make some waves, looking to shake it up a bit. Uh, probably have someone on the brand who's younger in career, a little aggressive, willing to take some chances, make some waves, and will shout from the rooftops when things work. Those are your bell cows. Find your bell cows. Finally, herding. What does it look like when everyone in your company gets excited about something? Uh, and there's lots of examples. I mean, you look at your giving campaigns and look at how things work around the holidays and look at how people work with new you know, employment programs and compensation. Always a good idea to check out HR. HR has got a really good sense of how herding works in the company. Uh, if you watch how HR rolls out programs, it's usually a good way to think about rolling out your own modern channel program. Um, but look at the way the company herds. Um, typically, you'll see like a range of ad adoption curves. You'll see people kind of early, middle, late. Um, but you'll also see people want to talk about it. You'll see community inside the organization. You'll see people excited. You know, maybe you're a t-shirt organization. Everyone gets to wear the t-shirt. That used to be a huge thing at Microsoft for years. He knew something was on the go when there was a t-shirt for it, to the point where it got so ridiculous that there's a very famous memo called uh, Shrimp versus Weenies, uh, which basically came out saying we need to stop ordering so many t-shirts. Um, and, um, and one day we'll talk about Shrimp versus Weenies. It's one of my, one of my favorite Microsoft stories. But yeah, you've got to think through like what is it that gets the company excited? What gets people behind things? And you want to be that kind of herd. 
right? You want to make sure that that last really exciting thing we all did as a company, that your modern channel initiative looks like a really exciting thing too. And it's got many of the same characteristics. So how do we get started? We're going to talk about this a lot. Uh, we're going to get speakers on here who will talk to it. I've got some really great people lined up who will be able to talk about how they got started. And I can talk maybe about how I got started in you know, sort of my previous to Sprinkler life. Um, but for now, just remember, make IT your best friend, find your bell cows, and make sure that you look like a herd when you get going. That's it for today. Thanks for joining the CXM Experience. I'm Greg Kahn. I'll talk to you tomorrow.